Hello my beauties, how is everyone doing? If you are new here, my name is Zoneza and I welcome you to my channel. Here we talk all things beauty, fashion, style, lifestyle, faith and femininity, you name it, we are on it. Please become part of this fast growing family by hitting the subscribe button down below and the notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever I post a new video. And to you, my returning beauties, welcome back. It is lovely to see you again. On today's video, I'm talking about dating advice that really transformed my dating life and my life in general. I've picked up that ever since I started the channel, I've only shared about the mistakes I made and even both my story times that I've done in the past were around the mistakes I made when it comes to love, but I have never really talked about how I transitioned from all those mistakes to now being married. That is proof that I eventually did get it right. Now today I am sharing with you the things that I picked up from personal experience and just observation that have helped me look at dating differently and eventually led to being married. So if you are dating in your 20s, mid to late 20s, as well as your 30s, at any age really, just above the younger age, on the more mature side of things you definitely have something to gain from this conversation these as most of the content that i talk about are things i wish someone had told me at some stage or i had actually applied even when someone had told me about them though i didn't at the time which resulted in dating problems <laughs> It is no secret that a lot of people are struggling when it comes to dating at any age any race or gender a lot of people have struggles when it comes to dating in south africa they even say umjolo is a pandemic which means dating is a pandemic i can tell you one thing though there's nothing new to struggles about dating because i haven't been on the dating scene for what four or five years now but i know the struggles have been there then and they were there even way earlier than that so it's nothing new the first mistake that i would like to advise you around is just doing that background check on the person that you're going to date i i know this may sound like i'm making you stalk people and all that it is great to know who you are starting to get to know before you even get into a serious relationship just try to gather as much information as possible if you are dating online, then ask him a few things, especially around the social media dating space. You really want to do your background check before even agreeing to meet with the person. Ask them the questions. You will find that a lot of things they will they will say them to you. But obviously, if they are a criminal, then they won't say everything. This is really vital. One for your safety and also just knowing what you getting yourself into. On one of the story times that I've done in the past. I made that mistake of just trusting a person without doing all the proper background check. So this is all about vetting. Get a police friend if you have. I have a lot of friends from my journalist days, but I never used them when I was making those mistakes. But just get someone to check. Ask these questions directly. Are you married? What happened to your previous marriage? Some can lie about it, but just asking those questions even if you later find out that this is what is happening you will know that you have asked those questions don't just assume that a person is single and if their last relationship didn't work it was all the other parties fault do that background check sis do that vetting the next point that we're looking into is to not date for someone to complete you not look for someone who's going to complete some things that you feel are inadequate uh, or are not enough about you. This speaks to getting to know yourself, doing all the work within yourself so that you are secure and complete and you're looking for a partner to partner with. Not someone who's going to be everything to you and you completely forget about yourself because you feel like they complete you, they are the missing piece to you as a person because it becomes dangerous when you date with this. Whatever that person does, you will feel, okay, this is me complete. And if they happen to be out of your life, you lose yourself again because you feel like you have lost a big part 
of yourself. When you are getting into any relationship, know that you are complete. This will help you with many things that you will have the objectivity of seeing ill treatment from this person instead of just thinking they are the prize that I've been looking for. Everyone is going to start seeing me differently once I start to date this person. They are going to complete me. Even my areas of insecurity, he's supposed to just, you know, lift me up from that and do it all alone. Once you do all the inner work on yourself and feel that I am complete and you are overflowing with that completeness, with that self-love and appreciation, only then can you start to date. At some stage, you find that it will matter what the person does, social standing, so that they can validate and complete who you are. Everyone can start to take you seriously because of who you are dating. Those are mistakes that you really want to avoid. One, because once a person knows that you look at them as that completing peace and you are nothing without them they will start ill treating you because you made it clear that they are what completes you instead of complimenting you this requires a lot of inner work and speaking of inner work it links directly to our third point take your time to get to know yourself get to know your shortcomings Take charge of your shortcomings because when we reflect back on past relationship mistakes, we tend to make a mistake of never owning up to any of our, of our faults that resulted into that relationship not working. For me, I really watched the pattern of the guys I had dated and I'll only count the long-term relationships. I'm not talking about uh, just random dates and whatnot. There were similar things that had led to the relationship not working that were pointing at me. It is okay as well to get external help. You can even ask from your friends or your sisters, what do you think my personality is like? You know, and be honest about the relationships that failed. Start being honest with yourself about the things that had happened. Because what I noticed about what I would do, I would always ignore my role that I had played in things not working out. Never owning up to how rude I could be at times. And, you know, just my commitment phobia. They were wrong to begin with. But what was making me choose those people? On that rare occasion of the relationship, maybe just going right, I had serious daddy issues that were manifesting themselves in never wanting to respect the other person. And, you know, just having this attitude of, I'm always right, I'm never gonna listen to anything that you have to say. And in whatever argument, I have to have the last word. And the interesting part about this was that I'm not like that as a friend. I saw that only in relationships. And at the same time, I would be this loving, loving girlfriend, but I just drop you. What was that? What was causing that? And at the sign of the relationship becoming more serious, then I would always find excuses, just not being accountable and taking the other person seriously. You know, these are things that I've since worked out for myself on my own and with a bit of external help. And of course, being born again and recommitting myself to the Lord, that really helped me to see things. So it's important to do that personal work and weeding out all these toxic traits to yourself yes i know and all these you will assume that everything has to do with the guy we're not talking about any sexy signs or how to do or how to you know how to flirt we're talking about the actual nitty-gritties of getting into a relationship and making it work the next point that we're looking at is to make sure that you date within your own belief and value systems this will eliminate the chances of having these big differences and you having to compromise yourself. I've made this mistake in the past and I know a lot of ladies have come forward about it as well. Just to eliminate the need for you to compromise or to explain yourself just from the onset before even going on a few dates with a person, first establish if their values and their belief system is similar to yours or not. Because asking these questions very early on helps you even going forward. If you do ignore these differences, they have a way of interrupting the relationship because your views to marriage will be different. Your views to simple things like forgiveness, giving each other grace will be extremely different. 
you will end up having to carry the other person and you know just you are setting yourself up for arguments one argument after the next what we're trying to do here we're trying to eliminate as many things that are most likely to cause us to fail before we even get into that relationship so if you are a christian date within the christian community and with this you don't just rely on what they tell you you observe if they really do embody this character of christ that they speak of that will affect a lot of things from the way that you communicate and i've seen situations where people have to ask the party if they can go to some church activities at least if you are with someone that understands the lifestyle that you're in and that shares the same values around family around dating around life in general things like giving and the charitable works someone who knows life with this one with the holy spirit for example as a christian you have your personal convictions and sometimes you don't raise issues in a relationship or a marriage and just believe that the holy spirit will convict that other person now imagine dealing with someone who knows nothing about the holy spirit who knows nothing about prayer and supplication how are they going to get those revelations how is that going to affect you in the long run and the value system and the faith will also determine your commitment if someone feels like they are free to date multiple people at a time or to actually have a, an open relationship or an open marriage once you determine these things around their value system and their faith that what they believe in you will determine what their views are on these things will be and of course ask those questions give yourself time to observe if this person is really within that faith group that they said to you they were in don't forget to comment on the comment section about any views that you're sharing about the issues that we're talking about here looking at the next point this one is for when you are already in that relationship do not make the mistake of concluding that you have a shared view or vision of the relationship. Sometimes we break our own hearts by assuming that this person sees marriage out of this relationship, sees a long-term partnership out of this relationship, and we just assume while the guy may just be looking for someone to kill time with, while well, they wait for whatever ask these questions and observe their actions don't just assume and start acting like you are taking that relationship there because let's face it no matter how modern the world has become and that affecting relationships men still hold that key into whether the relationship goes into marriage or not if you're dating to marry find out from him what the plan is regarding your dating regarding your relationship so that if you are not on the same page you break that relationship off how many times have you heard cases of people that will say we dated for 10 years and i was waiting for him to propose and he never proposed and if you were to ask the guy did you ever promise this woman that you'd marry her and oftentimes I will say, no, nope, I never said anything. We never talked about marriage. And then they will meet someone and marry that person within a month of knowing them, you know? So it is important to determine, to not assume that you have the same vision and goal for the relationship. Someone might want to be partners for the rest of their lives. If that's not what you're into, ask him, because some of us don't want that. Though a lot of people will still say, it's not different from marriage. For myself, that was never even an option. I've never lost my values around marriage. I've never lost my aspiration into marriage. I never envisioned myself being someone's partner for the rest of my life. That was just always a no-no. So going into a relationship, find out. Do not assume that you are moving towards the same direction and you are desiring the same things for that particular partnership. Otherwise, you'll end up being in a relationship alone and the person is thinking, well, the fling phase is over and just not telling you, just stringing you along. You know? Now, here's a reality check. This next point is definitely a reality check. When you are dating, don't base your relationship goals off of what social media is saying. 
don't have people that you put up on a pedestal as your relationship goes even when you are in that relationship because no relationship is without its issues now once you start basing your own relationship and comparing the kind of approach that the guy will have when they are coming to off of what other people are saying is how things happen for them will set you up for failure you will miss opportunities for yourself to get to know someone or to have a relationship work because you have this mindset of relationship goals what a relationship should look like and basing that strictly off of social media social media is mostly smoke and mirrors even in relationships that are happy that's that's amazing there are people that are genuinely happy in their relationships but every relationship has its down days even in marriage and now once you start basing everything about you and your relationship off of social media you will be gravely disappointed once those couple break up and all that you'll start to feel like ah things will never work out for me if they didn't work out for spun body now they are breaking up now they're getting divorced then you will be gravely disappointed people are living their lives and they are showing us only the good sides which i don't blame anyone for obviously they have content to create we're all about documenting the great part into everything we take pictures on our great days that is what happened even in relationships so just keep an awareness of your reality instead of just aiming for relationship goals and having people up on a pedestal setting them up as your goals that is a no no social media is social media real life is real life all right speaking of social media my next point is directly connected to that next mistake to avoid when dating specifically for any days of dating you have no business showing the world who you're dating i have made that mistake it was only once though it was that one relationship that i said um you know the guy was not all horrible but I should have shared that relationship on social media. It was a really like it was not a lot of shares, but I still feel like that was a mistake and it's something that I wouldn't want anyone else to to make. I feel like when you are still testing things out and still just dating, you know, seeing where things go, there's no need for you to put up that information on social media. One, it's not a shame that things end. You will have to be ready for the questions when that relationship doesn't work out or whoever you were dating you guys break up there is an audience that you have created that you will need to update but obviously if you have already put up that relationship and now you are seeing this information maybe have change your mind about that it is okay you can just keep quiet the people can ask whatever questions that they need to ask but you won't have to answer them from the beginning just don't give anyone anything until everything is signed you are married you are happy blah blah, blah. then maybe you can share a picture or two or if that is what you are comfortable with but generally social media doesn't need to know your every move when it comes to dating the thing about social media is that you have full control it's not like you, you are a celebrity that's being chased around by paparazzi then you feel you have to put up a statement saying me and who are dating and then when you break up you have to do that again save yourself the trouble save yourself the trouble of announcing relationships prematurely just just wait things out enjoy i know it can be really exciting when the relationship is on fire and whatnot to share but try restrain yourself restrain yourself have if, if it's so exciting have your girlfriends ready you know just share whatever exciting content that you have with your bae you know you don't want to put yourself in a position where you are over exposing your life particularly dating you know? the world does not need to know what you are trying out and what you are not and this next point i know it sounds really controversial but it needs to be said do not take relationship advice from someone who's already failing at relationships the best teacher is experience if they've not experienced a great relationship in front of you you've not seen them put in some work into a relationship and see it through chances are they are just as clueless as you are when it comes to dating i remember growing up when i was younger we used to give each other advice which i look back at now and think what were we even thinking because we also didn't have any relationship that we were basing that advice on we were just making assumptions just advising from hearsay i 
think the more experienced people that you actually see for example with marriage obviously no marriage is the same as the other no long-term relationship is the same as the other but you start it off better when the person is successfully doing what they're doing and advising from that place so i would say instead of asking your peers that are having the same struggles as you are for relationship advice go for someone who's more mature someone who has experienced a few things that have a genuine heart for a relationship because sometimes you will ask people about a relationship and they have an attitude just towards relationships in general so they will advise from that place you want advice that is genuine that is from someone who has your interests at heart and having what you are working towards succeed not someone who's gonna maybe even sugarcoat things that they shouldn't be sugarcoating or maybe just bashing a person and bashing your relationship so you want to look carefully into the person you allow to give you dating marriage or relationship advice for example you can ask me about failed relationships and working yourself back into something that is great finding peace and balance again at the bottom of it i have your interest at heart one of the most underrated pieces of advice that i would give you is to take a break in between disappointments in between relationships that end just to recoup I know in many instances people are advised to dive right back into the dating game even after a breakup. I would highly discourage you from doing that. Take the time before getting into the relationship I'm in now. I had intentionally taken a break from dating just to recoup. Allow your heart to recover because some of us you'll find that a person has been dating since maybe 19 and they've been at it well into their 30s do take a break and just recover give yourself the time give your body we're gonna get into the physical side of things on the next part of this we're gonna talk about celibacy we're gonna talk about sex now i just implore you to take the time you don't have to prove a point to your ex or to whoever you had dated that you have moved on there's no race here Take the time to heal and recover. And it is okay to be bruised. It is okay to be hurt. I think the first thing that we tend to do after a relationship, we want to act like we are not hurting because you know we've just been taught to be strong and even for the other person, you don't want to give them the satisfaction of knowing that they've hurt you. But you know what? Do take that break, relax, mourn your broken heart, but just don't stay there for too long, but do take the time. Allow your heart to you know, just feel and move on. You don't want to be carrying around all this baggage from one failed relationship onto the next one like you are in some kind of hurry. I don't care if you are 30, if you are 40 or 50 or 60, it's never too late to take a break and try again at a later stage. You don't have to rush through every relationship onto the next and onto the next. Allow yourself to heal. And with that point, we have reached the end of today's video. I hope you found these tips really useful. And if you've made any of these mistakes, just remember that it is okay to start over and there will always be room for you to do better next time. All I want is for us to make better choices and become happily ever after. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you are not yet subscribed, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell next to it so that you'll be notified when we do another fun and informative video. God bless you and I love you.